Uganda Development Bank Limited has repositioned itself as a key partner to the government of Uganda in delivering its National Development Plan, NDP. UDB uh, occupies a very unique space in Uganda's economy. First of all, we are the only development bank in Uganda. Uh, critically, we are a policy bank, which means that uh, we are a key financial institution in executing uh, the national policy, the government's policy. And in the plan, one of the key issues we bring out is the issue of financing. We have different types of financing. And now the UDB is the financing arm of the plan. Without UDB, implementation of our private sector driven economy will become a big problem. We are guided by the Vision 2040 and the National Development Plan 2, which is currently under implementation. The NDP2 identifies um, priority sectors that are supposed to help the country achieve middle income status. So our job is to constantly make sure that our interventions are aligned through the projects that we support. I'm glad your strategic plan has identified out key key areas of intervention. This bank should focus on sectors that help the economy to grow and expand. For the next five years, the purpose to, to focus on five key sectors of the economy, that is agriculture, both from primary to secondary and agro-processing. Um, we will focus on manufacturing, we we'll focus on supporting infrastructure, the infrastructure sector, as well as uh, tourism and, and hospitality. And last but not least, we purpose to devote uh, our, our resources to investments in human capital development, which essentially is in the health services and education services. Uganda's fast-rising population also implies that the consumptive market continues to grow, providing well-aligned enterprises. A case in point is Chidawalime Bakery Limited, now a leading bakery and wheat flour processing company in the country. Uh, we started the mill uh, with a facility from Uganda Development Bank. We commenced operations in 2017, around April. With the facility and the production that we're undertaking, we're able to subsidize on the inputs that we use in our bakery. So we've been mainly producing for ourselves. The cost of production are reduced at the bakery. And then we also have the ingredients, the main ingredient for the bakery, anytime we need it, because we plan for it. It has 11 bakeries countrywide in Bandwe, Mitiana, Wachiso, Mbarara, Kabale, Arua, Masaka, Fort Porto, Jinja and Nalumunye, as well as well-related outlets in all major towns. It's been very important. It has helped smoothen the running of the bakery. And the bakery has realized got some little bit of some more margin for profit, as well as us who have created an impact in the area. As a meal itself, we've increased on the jobs that have been created in the area. For its importance, Uganda Development Bank Limited has provided financing to Chidawalime Bakery Limited for 150 metric tons per day with flour processing plant in Nalumunye of Natete, a Kampala suburb expected to ensure sustained national market supplies for baking flour. They've come in handy, actually. They've been, uh, the facility for the, for the meal wasn't the only facility they've, they've so far given us. So when we finished uh, setting up and we had got the machinery, we didn't have money to start. We didn't have capital, so we still went back to the bank. And they gave us a facility to bring in the raw materials. So once we, we also got down and reduced this facility, we shall still go back to the bank. So the bank is our friend now, and we appreciate. We have a very close working relationship with the bank, and they have not been, they have not been bad for us. It's very interesting to see that um, a project uh, can move from this point to another. So um, 
we usually look, for example, at um, cash flows. If we put in our funding or our intervention, how do we support this business to grow? Because when a business grows, um, the number of jobs they create probably grow. They will contribute more to um, government revenue, etc. But also, um, generally, the entrepreneur has to, to, to grow. The bakery provides employment to 1,550 staff and has added an additional 45 staff since the installation of the processing plant. The company contributes tax revenues to government through its value addition activities. The wheat mill technology employed is unique and able to provide savings of up to 80% grain to flour conversion. A Rise and Shine Maize Millers is one of the beneficiaries of Uganda Development Bank's strategy of ensuring wider national benefit in its enterprise financing efforts. A collaboration with thousands of farmers grouped under cooperatives and supply maize grain out of their fields in Chiriandongo has seen it expand its capacity through equipment financed by UDB which includes 3,000 metric ton silos up from handling capacity of 400 metric tons, pre-cleaner, dryer, destoner, sorter, wide bridge and construction of modern factory warehouse. The value of the silos is 2.4 2, 2, 2, like 2, 2 billion and the, the running capital, UDP gave us something like 3, 3 billion which we, are, we use to do that, to stock maize and you give hope to the farmers in the villages. The associated milling assets financed by UDB and owned by Arise and Shine Maize Millers implies that Boyale Area Cooperative Enterprises, which is currently producing 9,000 metric tons per season from 1,150 registered members, while Nyamahasa has 1,350 registered members producing over 10,000 metric tons per season, will continue to enjoy price stability for their maize grain supplies to the miller. We do have now, we do have the, the, the facility, the storage facility here. We are even hoping to extend, to extend it to, to 10,000 metric ton of maize by the end of next year, by end of 2019. So farmers are so, so much assured that what they, what they have where they say they are what? How, how they have where to say they are maize and they, have, they are so much assured about their money, their money is there. After they have harvested their maize in a good way, they, are, they, they will just bring it out there in the channel and they will find hope. They will find the ready market for, for, their, for, their, for, their, for their crops. Alfio Miller's Uganda Limited is yet another major producer of a premium range of wheat flour, bakery flour, bran and animal feed products. Well, when we started this business, we started with only seven permanent workers and like 20 uh, casual laborers. But now, as we are talking now, we have 50 permanent workers and uh, 200 casuals. Prior to UDB's financing, it had a plant with a daily production of 100 metric tons. Now, it is a 280 metric ton project. We opted to add the capacity, the production capacity. So by that, UDB helped and financed us to acquire this machine. The project has thus created an addition of 40 jobs and will continue to contribute towards the tax revenues of government through the increased production capacity as well as on the country foreign exchange through exportation of goods to neighboring countries. Master Wood Bakers Limited is located at the Luzira Industrial Park. The investor believes that the fast-changing eating lifestyle of a large young population will provide it with the market for its wheat flour products. Generally, we, we, we will sell to those who go and distribute and, and sell to the retailers. We procure the wheat and uh, clean it and mill it into wheat flour, which is used for baking bread, chapati, 
mandazi, all of that, as you know, all those products that come from wheat. Master Wood anchors its growth to meet the growing demand for baking through its state-of-the-art modern wheat processing plant, financed through the Uganda Development Bank. Uh, when we got interested in wheat milling, of course, the capital investment was a little bit high, and they indeed funded us to the tune of 5 billion shillings, which has the us in a pro procurement on adding, on topping up, on uh, procuring the machinery and a bit of work capital. Unlike commercial banks, they can give you a bit of time to start paying the principal. Otherwise, as of now, we are still paying interest. Just like other large-scale millers, they're looking for better policy incentives that should see their aggregate output support Uganda and slowing down the large import bill on wheat products alone worth more than $260 million annually. If we were to work day and night, we would be able to meet 120 metric tons of wheat grain. I think we're employing close to 78 people in the, in the direct employment. But of course, there is a lot of indirect employment in this field because as you produce this flour, it goes on the market and the chapati guys, you know, you see these tables, these chapati tables all are wrong in, in all the towns you move, in all the trading centers. Those, that's an, a form of employment. Last year alone, uh, our loan book was only about 240 uh, billion, but we generated 17,000 new jobs. This year, our loan book, as we speak now, our loan book is over 300 billion. So this is expected to generate even more jobs than the jobs our projects have created last year. The national representation of projects financed by UDB continues to grow. In the eastern region of Uganda, one of the most productive farmer organization is the Kapchora Commercial Farmers Association Limited, Kakofa. It is also the biggest producer of grain and single supplier of barley and sorghum to Uganda Breweries Limited, a critical agro-processing import substitution model in the country. Since the 2013 Kuela Bads disaster, Kakofa has failed to secure funding for a bailout to revive its business until 2017 when it sought the assistance of UDB. Uh, Uganda Development Bank funded uh, specifically about five areas of our business. Number one is it funded the input and seed sector, that is seed and fertilizer. And that has gone down to the farmers to ensure that we have quality seed and quality fertilizer. The bank funded the silo installation. Then, after contracting the civil works, we also had the original supplier, Kimbria, East Africa, to install the equipment. The bank has enabled us and working capital of 1.723 billion Uganda shillings. That has helped us to be able to purchase grain from our farmers. Given the significant socio-economic importance of the project to Sebei sub-region and Uganda as a whole, UDB took the decision to intervene and advance Kakofa a loan of 9.2 billion Uganda shillings. So the bank's intervention has been very, very critical. It has now re-imaged this institution the confidence level of the farmers has gone up in that our provision of quality inputs, seed and fertilizer, which are critical in production, particularly commercial production. We are happy that they have a partnership now with UDP. And we think once the issues are addressed, you are addressing the small holder farmers like us. So if Kokofa could be able to add value to what we produce, 
that would mean they would be able to pay us a better price and we would be able to get back the byproducts like the maize bran and use it to feed our animals. The project is expected to have significant socio-economic impact, including increasing household income for over 6,000 smallholder farmers, creating over 10,000 indirect jobs along the value chain, contribute 13,500 metric tons of grain per annum to support food security as well as tax contribution to the government. One of the other major successes that we have scored through the funding of the bank, Uganda Development Bank, is our increasing our storage capacity. The warehouse that you see has a capacity of 2,000 metric tons. But the silos that we have now installed doubles our storage capacity because the silos are 2,500 metric tons. So we have moved from 2,000 metric tons to 4,500 metric tons. Our technology has improved in managing grain and therefore our vision and mission of improving this, the livelihoods of the smallholder farmers, we know that this dream is going to come true. In Kasese district, within the base of the forceful Mobuku irrigation scheme, lies the ambitious Avasaija Kweyamba, a primary agriculture project which is currently rated the best smallholder farmer organization at seed multiplication by way of quality and quantity. The major crop grown in the scheme is maize as seed. And the maize that is being grown is grown on contract. And uh, it is being sold to seed companies. So far we are dealing with uh, three seed companies. One which is a farm harvest, farm input care center. Another one is Nalwayo Seed Company and then East African Seed Company. The development lender's intervention has helped the society produce a minimum of 400 metric tons per season of certified seeds. This is supporting the agriculture sector and reducing the demand supply parity being grossly impacted by fake seed and imports. The, the loan has helped them much because um, the farmers can now access inputs. So as a result, the acreage has increased. The farmer gets a loan from the society in form of inputs of fertiliz like fertilizers, then plus cash. With the Renzori subregion, UDBL's intervention has thus contributed toward food security in the country through seed inputs provided by the society, employment opportunities to the community, as well as an increase in household incomes by approximately 10 million shillings annually. In the northern region, Gulu, and surrounding districts is where a record 5,000 smallholder farmers under the OPIT investments are involved in agro-processing of rice and maize for onward sale across the country and in two neighboring markets such as South Sudan and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, OPIT investment deals in a variety of things, but majorly we are on produce. Uh, we are dealing with farmers who are our main suppliers of what we deal in. We add value to it. Like when we buy the maize, we process and then we sell the, the products to other consumers. The bank's intervention has enabled the association to produce 20,000 metric tons of grain per annum contributed towards the increase in household incomes by one million per annum and provide direct and indirect employment opportunities to the community. I, I, I give my vision to the Uganda Development Bank that I want to grow bigger. And the Uganda Development Bank took us where I was down 
and he brought out of this level. We are employing the youth in a lot of activities, which has also helped them to support themselves and their families. And when I grow my farmers, like this one, I take it to pit. To pit. We have a very big store in Opit, and we take that uh, our thing we grow in Opit. My work is farming. I'm now a progressive farmer. I'm dealing with maize, cassava, rice, and kafurifu. My level is now need a tractor. We have poor storage facilities. Uh, we need silos, things like silos, like dryers, eh, such that we can preserve our products and add more value to our products. In the mid-northern region within the district of Amolata, Hope Development Initiative is identifying with collective group farm activities for its members. And so the money has been kind of like um, a vehicle that has enhanced really the small older farmers to have any meaning of farming, I think in the whole country. I'm grateful that the, the, the relationship we've had with UDB has basically made me who I am. <laughs> and it has really made the how to grow us to grow. I remember they funded us 2014, we're about 2,000, now we're about 10,900 members. Now with the uh, Hope Development Initiative, uh, they have been giving us some loan to help us in farming. They gave me a tractor, and after tractor they gave me also seeds. After seeds then they gave me financial support to, for weeding. At the moment I've seen farmers move from one acre to 10 acres to 20 acres. We've got farmers who have even now graduated. We've got a farmer who has bought his own tractor from the financing of, uh, of UDB, who is now also now, pro, I mean, giving out tractor services to others. With access to quality inputs out to value addition, they're giving their account on the impact of UDB. The financing has helped us as a cooperative from buying seeds from Kampala to opening our own seed farm of 500 acres. So in other words, the financing has actually finances the whole value chain. It gives you the inputs, then it gives us the opportunity to provide the market to the farmer. Work, every action, every project you move to assist, ask a question. How many new jobs are you going to create? We're quite serious about growth. Um, looking at what we've projected to grow at the end of um, 2025, we should be growing about fourfold, but we believe um, with the support we have from all stakeholders and government um, and the funds that we are able to now mobilize and generate, we could probably exceed that. So by 2022, uh, we really believe that the bank will be substantial, the size of the bank will be quite substantial. And at that point, we believe that we shall be making meaningful interventions and being more relevant. <laughs>